When I see the tape running, I'll talk. Are you recording? Okay, there we go. We're on the air. And this is session two of Conversations. We ended the first session with a question that Megan posed. My name is Peter Diamondstone, and I'm going to participate in the conversations. I'm Allison Peters. And my name's Meg Piercy. And I'm Owen Diamondstone. The question was that we ended on, Megan, was what? Well, my question was, uh, can you talk about um, your thoughts about a uh, multiple party system compared with what Bernie Sanders is trying to do right now, which is infiltrate the Democratic Party and try to change that system from within one party of a two-party system? I guess I begin with a different question. All right. In my, tra my tradition, you ask, ask a question to answer a question. What is it we want to accomplish? I mean, do we want to somehow affect the system so that it's more democratic? If so, are we going to continue arbitrary discrimination against people of a certain age? Uh, that's one question we want to answer. Are we going to continue to have government that has a secret? Can voters make intelligent decisions if the government itself has any secrets at all? I mean, how can you make decisions if you don't know what the government is doing? So if Sanders inside outside strategy or uh, the strategy that I'm engaged in of alternative parties, not third parties. Um, in, my, in my vocabulary, if you say the word third parties, you're implying that there are two others. That's why they always use that language to describe everybody who's not uh, either an elephant right. or a jackass. Right. Good point. Um, but alternative is not pejorative in that sense. Um, so I participate in uh, multiple parties. And that we began Liberty Union with a press conference with Bill Meyer, Dennis Marshall, and myself. Bill Meyer took the inside outside approach and said, I'm a candidate for the US Senate with Liberty Union in order to pull the Democratic Party to the left. And he had been the only Democrat elected statewide in 1958 for over 100 years. And then he was too good, so the party threw him out. Uh, I think Denny's statement was he was a candidate for the US House because he wanted to stop the war in Vietnam. And mine was, I'm a candidate for attorney general in order to begin the creation of a political party that has candidates for every office, elective office in the state. So that being said, all those that focuses on the current system, do we want to look at that and make changes? For instance, do we want to say anybody can vote and get rid of discrimination on the basis of age? Do we want to eliminate the issue of uh, simple majority as a method of decision making? I mean, the only basis for that is to prevent violence. I mean, everybody accepts simple majority only because it prevents there from being violence that change from occurring violently. It's peaceful. Um, and the other issue that I raised is the one of secrecy. Can you do anything if the government has one secret? Well, Anyone? Can, can it be a democracy? With can, yes, secret. if we were talking about can we expand democracy, can it be a democracy if the government has a, any, any secrets? Because voters can't make, can't make an decision. Right, can't, can't make, make an informed decision if there's right. a secret. Well, um, given the history of 
America's party systems, do you think that there is a real viability of affecting change in the near future with alternative parties and not working with this inside-outside strategy? As Bill Myers proved, it doesn't generally yeah, work. It doesn't work. the party fired him because yeah. he was too good, which is yeah. essentially what they, they've done with Bernie as yeah, well. Yeah, he's losing more and more ground as we sit here. Yes. Um, unless, for some reason... Hillary Clinton drops dead or something happens. <laughs> He's the only alternative available. Um, now I'm not sure even that simple majority rule is appropriate. Uh, interestingly, in Vermont, if you don't get a simple majority for statewide office, we don't have a runoff. We turn it over to the to the legislature. Can you clarify what you mean by a runoff? Take the top two and have another election. So on the As, ballot, how does that work exactly on the ballot? If you had A, B, C, and D, mm -hmm. and A and B came in first and second, you would have another election okay. between A and B. I see. Or you could even so have A and B with two different politicians running. Mm -hmm. Okay. It'd be like oh. finals. To decide between, like a Actually, if there had been four candidates, you would probably want to do it, have two more elections, one to eliminate number th four and one to eliminate number three. Which is not how we do it. We have the legislature. The legislature decide. does it, right. And an issue with that that I see is that it's a barrier for third-party politics because if there's the party in control of the legislature, will always pick. Yeah. Will always pick their almost their always. Words. Once they didn't. When was that? Uh, I forget his name. He turned out to be a crook. And Jerry Diamond warned us, um, warned the legislature that they shouldn't vote for the guy who got the most. I forget his name, and they didn't. Uh, and this was in Vermont. Yeah. Given the current climate, do you think that a candidate such as Bernie Sanders would have achieved? the level of success, if you will, if he had run in an alternative party, do you think that he would have been a viable you know, candidate for president, really, in the system that we currently have? I love the language. Viable? <laughs> yeah. Uh, and run? And campaign? Nobody treats it like a job application. They treat it as a, uh, a gladiatorial event. More of a horse race. Yeah. And the press is there as the tout, and we are the betters <laughs> on the outcome. The, the hiring committee is not a hiring committee. We're just betters at the window picking tickets. <laughs> Peter, what, you're one of the founding fathers of, or founding yeah. parents of the Liberty yeah, Union Party. Yeah, yeah. What, what prompted you or what inspired you to, to start a new party? Well, I thought that we could practice the kinds of changes that I implied by the questions I asked earlier. So, while state law says the people in the party have to be of voting age, in Liberty Union, there's no age requirement. And we had a decisive issue decided in 1976 when Margaret Wright won a presidential primary. More votes cast for her than ever cast in a Liberty Union primary before or since. And we broke into two factions, the Diamond Stoneites against the Sanderistas. And Sanderista had eight votes, and Diamond Stone only had six, two of whom with children around eight, uh, Paula and her girlfriend. Um, and Margaret Wright lost. Sanders didn't want her on the ballot because she would take votes away from um, Carter. So we were already in the kind of split, I mean, as early as, seven, actually it goes before 76, but that's where we were. And I, 
I always felt that we could do some things as institutions. For example, we make all policy, all procedure, all platform decisions by consensus. And I don't mean necessarily unanimity. That is the absence of a conscience-driven negative that would block the group from accepting the proposition that was before it. And we do that in violation of state law. State law says it's got to, all decisions have to be made by simple majority. Um, state law also says that all balloting has to be secret balloting. And there are no secret ballots in Liberty Union. That's been since 1973. And that raises the question is, should we have a secret ballot in general elections? And should the legislature be able to have a secret ballot when it makes the decision uh, who should become governor when nobody gets the majority? I mean, shouldn't we have the right to know how they're, uh, how they're voting? There are so many deficiencies from a de democratic, and I mean small d from the point of view of democracy, we sort of boxed in. And while Liberty Union was, is boxed into that process, within our own party, we have been violating the law since it was adopted. Most of those changes were adopted after they found out they got a copy of our rules. Um, I can't remember the Republican who got the first copy, who was the Secretary of State. But then there was James Guest's assistant, two years in a row, got a copy of our rules. And my memory is that that's when they made the changes, some of the changes that now make our behavior outlawed. For instance, the decision to decide things through consensus and yeah. not simple majority. Yeah, we do preserve con simple majority for the purpose of nominations, that being less important in the hierarchy than platform, platform and, and, and policy and procedure. Um, and we've only changed procedure once, and that's when the legislature changed the timing of when you had to file your petitions. Um, so I don't know where to begin on this. Should we have teach people discrimination? Mindless, in my view. Mindless discrimination telling you you can't vote until you reach a certain age. Why is that? I mean, you can't do any more harm than your parents have done. Um, often you do the same harm that your parents That's do. right. <laughs> often, often that would happen. So, so what? <laughs> it's just... Um, but I remember being at the People's Party Convention in St. Louis... And the issue was legalization of uh, contraband drugs like cocaine. And the Black Caucus said, no, don't legalize it. It's being used to deaden our communities. And the white communities was all in favor of legalization, at least in the People's Party. So the, Black, the Children's Caucus met and invited the Black Caucus to come and talk to them about it. And the Children's Caucus was convinced by the Black Caucus, and they came out and voted against us. And I remember my kids were crying because they were voting against their mom and dad. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that's a good good thing to happen to them, to you know, just be willing to stand up to their parents on, an, on this kind of an issue. I mean, no harm in it. Right. Um, so I, I think I want to refer to a tract written by a former member of Peace and Freedom. And I believe before that he was in Socialist Workers, but I'm not sure. Peter Cameo wrote a piece called Avocado Declaration. And I would refer that to everybody who wants to try and understand this political system, because he sets forth, and it's not very, it's only 20 some odd pages, dull as dog do, but, and, but a really 
intelligent analysis of the relationship between the Democratic and Republican parties and how we're sort of trapped by it. But I think it would apply just as well in Holland, where they have multiple parties, or Britain. Right. Um, and usually in those countries it will take, uh, nobody gets a majority in the parliamentary vote, they have to form coalitions. Um, and doesn't that dilute what they're trying to do as individual parties, if they have yeah. to form coalitions? Yeah. yeah. So and the, so the Socialist Party has virtually disappeared mm -hmm. throughout Europe. Sanders may call himself, or did originally call himself a socialist, changed it to social de independent and then to now he calls himself a social democrat. As far as I'm concerned, the enemy of socialism is social democrats. So, um, because they support, in effect, the capitalist system and a three-class system. Right. Socialism itself b would confiscate wealth to create a single class. And exactly. They, and they co-opt. They co-opt the same block of people who would support socialism. Right. And distract them from an ultimate goal. True, and I think it's interesting that what will effectively happen is the progressive movement will go as far as the owners of capital will let them go. Um, it seems like within that's that's what's within this within mm -hmm. their profit making system. And that is probably the greatest evil of all. Um, and you watch it in Venezuela where profit making on oil was what socialism was built on and it don't work anymore. Yeah, exactly. Right? And they no longer have sustenance farming in yeah. Venezuela. Right? What would you say to people who, for instance, people who have joined the social democratic movement with, behind Bernie Sanders and got really excited and politicized for the first time and they saw a real chance of overturning power to give them hope in building a movement outside of this du duopoly system. You gotta get burned. You gotta get burned? You gotta and get burned. Because, <laughs> because people wanna see change and they want it to happen now. Yeah. They don't wanna wait 10 years. They don't wanna wait 20 years. What I went through. Yeah. In 1968, I went clean for Eugene. Right. And I worked f at the same time for Dick Gregory for yeah. peace and freedom. And that was the last time I did schizophrenic politics because Eugene McCarthy double-crossed us. I wasted my time. Um, for him, the Democratic Party was more important than the war in Vietnam. Yeah, no, I think getting burned is where you have to go. I got burned, and I never have done schizophrenic politics since, except when Liberty Union didn't have enough recognition through the polls and its party organization to warrant being a major party, I would often visit in the primaries of the other parties. Uh, when the Progressive Party became a major party, I visited in their primary. But I can remember when I visited in the Republican primary. And once I got elected in the Democratic primary, which was a great disappointment because I entered the primary in order to create a discussion, but nobody wanted to have a debate with me. Um, so they gave it to me. They didn't care because they were supporting Bernie. And he was outside the Democratic Party or appeared to be outside the Democratic Party. Um, and Sanders and I stayed I, sort of brothers at each other's throats, but lovingly. Uh, up until 1984, you know, this thing about hold your nose and vote for Carter. Right. Uh, or, but in 84, it changed. He changed. In 84, he campaigned around, or he politicked around the state for Fritz Mondale. And I think 10 different whistle stops where I would meet him with a leaflet where I referred to him as Quisling. And that did not please him. And we have hardly said a sane word to each other since. Um, 
that's when he joined the Democratic Party in, in a more or less official in way. Effect. Yeah. He, in effect, joined it. Yeah. So you said you won the you won a Democratic primary. Was this the primary for Senate? No, Congress, uh, U.S. Con House. This was, mm -hmm. and this was when Bernie was also. Yeah, I think so. so. You were in the Democratic primary, contesting. Yeah, I thought I would get into Bernie. a debate with him, or somebody. Maybe right. it would be long. Maybe it would be some other Democrat, but nobody else wanted to get into it because they weren't because Sanders was their candidate anyway. Right. And so I the, was stuck. In the general election, did you get to debate with the Republican and Oh yeah. Bernie? Yeah. Yeah, I was a candidate of the Democratic Party and Liberty Union. Yeah. Um, Do you miss him? You said that you haven't talked to him in a long, you know, since haven't, 1984. Haven't exchanged a decent word with each other no, no, since no. 1984, except in the candidate forums. But you, and then you said you were brothers that loving. Before and, that. Yeah. Do you miss him as a, no. as a friend? No. No. No, it was, so it was a divorce. Yeah. All right. Um, and uh, I suppose there's always a little grief to start with. But you get over it. <laughs> uh, on the other hand, it has helped me recognize the contribution that he made to Liberty Union. Um, our platform is derived out of um, an article he wrote in uh, the Liberty Union publication, which he was solely responsible for putting out called Movement. Um, one of his articles was Doris Lake works in a factory. <laughs> I mean, I think he got out about 10 issues in 14 years. I mean, 14 months. Um, and he was a brilliant orator. And I referred to him as a silver tongue. Uh, so it was his activity that saved Liberty Union, along with Martha Abbott, interestingly enough. She, was, she ran the party from 1970 to 1976, and Nancy Kaufman, another one of the silver tongues. Uh, but that's really, I mean, that's giving recognition to what they did and how it ended up preserving Liberty Union, along with Michael Parenti, who was a candidate for the U.S. House. But they really blocked change. They really didn't like people under not of 18 uh, not being able to vote. They really didn't like. They would never agree to consensus decision making. They would never agree. Well, the one thing they did agree to was open ballot. Nobody, and no issue in Liberty Union, were we able to have a closed ballot. I think it was 73 when we made that decision. So that that was a very big step, and it encouraged me. But that was a dead end until they left in, in 76 and 77. In regards to the voting age, didn't the voting age debate, didn't you and uh, Sanders have a disagreement over when people should be allowed to right, vote? Right, yeah, yeah. It was a debate at the... Leland, um, not Leland Gray. Uh, what's the one over in... Uh, it was in, at the Man Manchester Vermont yeah, High School. Yeah. Like well, it's, it's got two names I can Burn Burton. Burn Burton. Burn Burton. Uh, and we were in the basement, and he was taking the view that uh, people should be able to vote when they reached puberty, and I was taking the view that there should be no voting age, no mm -hmm. limitation. Uh, It'd be hard to enforce puberty. Puberty. Whatever. They'd have to go to have to go to the town clerk for physical inspection. Uh, <laughs> um, and and we we both realized the absurdity of both of them in the context of the politics that we were living in, but we decided that we, you had to step outside of conventional thinking to make change. And at that time, Sanders was with that. What he's been espousing now, you can find carefully detailed in the platform of, Fra uh, not Franklin, of Teddy Roosevelt, Break Up the Big Corporations, and William Meyer in 1958, who was proposing uh, that college be paid for by society, uh, that it be treated just like high school. Yeah, these ideas are not new. They're right. actually 
but in today's climate, they're considered radical. But they come out of Vermont that, tradition exactly. in Bill Maya. In a Vermont tradition. Yeah, he was, he, you, if you can find this, he had a glossy sheet with all of these programs spelled out, which recognize red China, carry on trade with everybody, nuclear disarmament. I mean, the whole raft of things that are now considered such wild ideas. There he was in 1958. No wonder the Democrats threw him out. And the really wild thing about that was a largely Republican, like a Republican state right. elected him, a state yeah. that hadn't elected anyone. Right. Because the, Democrats the first, the, the guy who, they, they would put up somebody, anybody, because they knew that they'd beat the Democrat, but they put up a drunk. <laughs> and, and the voters didn't like that. Mm -hmm. uh, and Bill Meyer was, you know, he wore the, cons the conservation green and he worked in the forests and um, people thought highly of that. It wasn't the, his politics that, that sold him. They, they voted for the, the better man. The better man, the yes. Better man. Yeah. So, and they were right. Yeah. You know, one of the things I, I keep thinking is, so here we have Bernie Sanders picking, it's like he's cherry picking the good ideas. Mm -hmm. Puts them into, you know, a, a, a platform, and then, and then the establishment refuses it, and they have more power, or thus far have had more power in their corruption with the election. So what will work? We, we know what doesn't work, but what will work to make this revolution happen? You know? Well, it's, it's, we not, it's it. not very People revolutionary. Right it. if, it's, it's, if it's all old stuff, it's not very revolutionary. I, mean, I think we both, if you want to look at something revolutionary, let's start with confiscation of the wealth that belongs to the wealthy and redistributing it to all the people of the planet. How do you do that? How is that done? You know, when Sanders talks about revolution from below, that's what it is. His is not a revolution from below. His is among voters. All right? I mean, that's people, there are no 10-year-olds in that one. Right. Um, but it, and also, you know, cr people who have been have criminal charges, people who have yeah. migrated to this country, don't have the right to vote. You know, ha be, being able in to Vermont, vote it's is some interesting. Kind of Even if you're in prison for a felony, you this get to vote while you're in, when you're in jail. But in most in states, it's not. That's true. right. So mm -hmm. maybe you shouldn't be able. Maybe that's the first thing that has to go. This disability, losing your vo right to vote because you've been convicted of a crime. Mm -hmm. Maybe. If I, okay, so if the capitalists control, control who they feel make acceptable politicians to be sitting in Washington, and um, change can't happen from within the system, and we're looking for, uh, for the left to rise to power so that these, these policies we've been talking about to succeed, does it make more sense to vote for Trump in the, <laughs> in, in the general election than anyone else? Because, <laughs> no, <it's> because <laughs> if we vote for Trump, the, the left won't be sedated as it was <laughs> when Obama was elected. For instance, yeah. when Bush yeah, was yeah, the yeah. president, we had yeah. strong grassroots movements of the left. Well, I think that you could you also had... argue that that in Bush's reign, it crushed a lot of movements. Mm -hmm. It crushed the global anti-globalization movement. Things that happened after 9/11. Um, I mean, we saw we saw a real repression of um, grassroots movements. Um, maybe I mean maybe there's another side to this, but that's my personal experience. What I witnessed. Okay.